Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And today we got a pretty interesting printer from FL Sun called the Super Racer. So this is a Delta printer and I'm really excited to unbox this thing and put it together and try it out. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. All right, so this is a pretty large box that the Super Racer comes in. And I'm not too sure how much it weighs, but it's, you know, got a good amount of weight to it. I would definitely say in the 30 to 40 pounds area. And the box dimension in centimeters is 87 wide, 41 in depth, and a 19 tall. So yeah, definitely a pretty large box and quite heavy. And because this is a Delta printer, they're usually higher because of the way they're set up. And this one's here is definitely on the larger size. But in any case, let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so it does appear to be plastic wrapped. Interesting, normally I just take the lid off the top and then we take the parts out piece by piece, but maybe this one we'll have to dump it out first. All right, so now we can go ahead and take the top off. So we got a nice layer and it is the soft black foam that everything's encased in. So yeah, this is what we see on top. And the reason it's this long is because we have pretty long channels that are actually quite large so it appears to be that they're pre-built and as far as i can see guys this thing really looks heavy duty these belts are just huge so this is definitely not a small printer and very well built so this is our tension adjusters here on the belt wow very cool and we even got pretty decent sized motors here for the axis so this is i guess one of the three corners because there are two more just like it all right, so here we have the manual. And I love when companies include a manual because it's really nice to get started and it's just a simpler process. So yeah, it looks like we got a very nice manual that goes through step by step of how to assemble this thing and then also to operate it. Very nice. So let's see what else we got here. We got the AC power cord. It looks like a pretty decent length. The USB cable to connect from the printer to the computer. Looks like our bag of hardware and some tools. And we'll open this up in a bit. It also looks like there's an extra heat block in there. We also get a metal spatula that's not sharpened. And a bracket looks like to a spool holder. And it's a pretty simple spool holder with just two pieces of metal. And for the last part here on top, it looks like we have the arms that connect the hot end. So I'm not sure exactly what they're made out of. They look like carbon fiber. They're very light and there's springs in between, which is interesting. So yeah, there's three sets of these arms that will connect from the motors to the hot end. And I like how everything is pre-assembled. So this should be very easy to put it together. Just snap them on. Pretty cool how there's logos on some of the bags. All right, and so that is the top layer. So this printer is very well packed and laid out here. So we got a lot more interesting things to see here. I'm gonna flip this thing around. I think we're looking at the back side. So let's start with the smaller pieces here. So here it looks like we have a bracket with an extruder on it and the filament detector. So the extruder is a dual drive extruder, which is very nice. It looks like it's an off brand, but nevertheless, it is a dual drive, which is great, especially for this printer that's high speed and the filament detector is pre-mounted. So yeah. All right, see what else we got here. Okay, I think this is the bed leveling mechanism that you attach to the head. So this is kind of like an accessory that you add to the printer when you first need to level the bed and then you pull it off. All right, so here we have the hot end itself. And this thing is really nice. The build quality and the way everything's put together, it's just, it looks really nice. Okay, so I see where the sensor connects to right over here and it connects right there. And then you do the bed leveling and then you pull it off. But yeah, let's take a closer look at this hot end. So it is in volcano style 
inverted long ways heat block with a silicone sock so yeah they expect you to print fast with this thing because it has everything it needs for that we also have dual coolers here the parts cooling two fans on the side so very nicely constructed we got a large heat break fan pretty cool little logo here on the front and you guys can see this aluminum bracket with these little balls and this is actually where these arms connect to and so the way these work is that instead of pressing on and holding themselves the spring it's in the middle is the thing that compresses them together so if you just put one side in and then you stretch on the other side and the spring kind of stretches and that's a quite a unique design and they already have grease in there so everything is nicely greased so yeah a lot of attention to detail on this printer i'm really liking how they got everything set up here and out of the top here we got connectors that connect to everything our ptf e-tubing that goes to the extruder and also there's even a clip here on the coupler for the bowden tube not to move around so big thumbs up for fl sun so far for all this attention to detail all right well it's pretty exciting what this printer has to offer here so for some reason we get some sandpaper and pretty rough too i'm not sure what that's for but it does come with it and also what we get is a pretty small spool of sample filament in white which is nice that they include it on a spool here we have another baggie looks like with parts and grease brushes it's like an sd card or a thumb drive adapter there so we'll open this up once we get a little farther down in the video and the last part here which it looks to be like the screen but it is tethered to the base here so we're going to look at that together here in a second so the main parts of the printer are the box bottom and the top so the bottom has the bill plate let's go ahead and pull it out and you guys can see it's kind of like a triangle design which is how all delta printers are made so the bed is glass and it's that perforated kind kind of like ultra base or when it heats up the print sticks and then when it cools off it just pops right off and i'm loving the construction everything is nicely put together here we got our voltage selection and ours is actually on 230 we need to change that to 115 so don't forget to do that and then one of the corners here we have the power input socket it is fused with an on and off switch and here on the front looks like that's the front since that's the logo there's a little door looks like let's see okay yeah it's a little tray it's actually quite large you can put all your tools in wow that's awesome very cool and our last part here is the other side and this is actually the bottom of it it's like upside down so the top is the smooth part and it looks like our spool holder goes right here on the top and our main board is in there also and you guys can see the the both usb inputs and the sd card slot and that looks like the front with the logo and this is where the remote is actually tethered to it and it's a pretty nice little handheld little touchscreen display remote looks like it says super racer on it and it does appear to be like it magnetizes i'm going to peel that off and also there's a little speaker back here too so very interesting i like the intention and detail in this printer and the overall design so far so yeah looks like that's everything guys so it all was packed very well in this nice fall so let's go ahead and get this out of the way and the next thing we'll do is we'll bring in the top here and i want to go ahead and open it up so we can look at the inside and the main board all right so we're going to need our tools so let's grab this bag and see what we got in here so we do get some pretty nice high quality snippers the extra heat block with the sleeve and also an extra nozzle lots of bolts looks like there's a few different kind maybe only two shouldn't be too complicated and some tools like this open-ended wrench a small flat screwdriver and a couple allen wrenches all right so let's go ahead and take this cover off and what's interesting is that both of the allen wrenches don't fit the bolt that holds the cover down which is interesting that they included two normally they would include at least four maybe they don't want you to be opening all that up which is no problem for us because we got other sets of wrenches that we can go ahead and undo this cover all right let's see so to the cover there's four connectors that are taped on each corner and these are looks like the motor connectors but if we open it up we can see there's not too much in here but we do have the motherboard with a very large fan that blows on the heat sinks of the stepper drivers so the stepper drivers are removable but i cannot get to them easily and they're actually also i got some silicone on them where it doesn't pop off so and i don't know if you guys can see but the board is a mks robin nano version 3.0 so so yeah it looks like it's the latest greatest thing and this printer needs to have a good board because if it does high speed it has to process all that information also guys i don't know if you can see maybe but here on every end you can see that little 
board there, that red, that's actually the inductive or optical sensors on each corner of how the axis is stopped. I guess the end stop for each axis. Looks good overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on and then we'll start with the assembly. And also guys, if you are gonna take your cover apart, just notice that there's a little hole here, a feed through. Looks like where the filament goes through the box and that lines up there with that PTFE tubing. So yeah, it goes just like that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's take a look at the instructions here. So our first step is to flip the top base upside down, looks like, and then start installing the three axis channels with the motors that go inside of it. And then obviously we need to plug them in. And there are four of the longer bolts that hold each of the legs. So yeah, this assembly is probably going to be quite easy because everything is pretty much ready to go here. So we got it upside down. We'll just start with on this side here with the Y. Now make sure you have your cables out so you can see them. And you guys can see that there's four threads there on each corner. So on these channels here, they look all to be exactly the same. Well, actually maybe not, because here we have a Z, so they're not the same. But we're looking for a Y. So let's grab one that says Y. So yeah, it's a good thing we were paying attention because that maybe would have been not so good. Apparently it might make a difference of where it goes. But in any case, you guys can see there's four holes here on the front side and the bolts are gonna go through them into the threads here. So I just simply kind of literally slides right in there. But before we slide it in, we need to go ahead and plug in the motor wire. So once we plug it in and now we can insert it. So it all kind of sits together. Now we're gonna grab our bolts and I think there's only two kinds, the longer kind and the short kind. So we're gonna use the long ones here and we're gonna need four for each corner. Grab the provided Allen wrench and start our bolts. They should line up. There we go. So yeah, very simple and straightforward. All right, and that's all four. And you can go ahead and snug them up if you want, but I'm gonna wait till I install all of the channels and the other end. That way it all lines up nicely before I, you know, tighten everything because I want it to be all in the position it wants to be before I solidify the whole frame. So yeah, simple as that, guys. Our Y is on, and now we're gonna move to the next one, which is Z. So yeah, very simple process and nothing complicated here. And our last one, which is the X. All right, and that is all three of them. So for the next part, we're gonna be installing the upper portion. So this is what we got so far. Well, I guess it's the bottom portion since the printer's upside down. But yeah, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna lay it into the top and then there's the same four bolts that we're gonna tighten it to. And then we're also gonna install that little magnetic thing, which apparently is for the screen holder. So we're gonna turn the logo here so we can see it because we're gonna line everything up to that. And if we go up, Hopefully you guys can see pretty well here. We're gonna grab the bottom base and with the logo pointing towards the front. So I'm gonna turn it upside down and logo towards the front. I'm gonna line it up like this. Now it should sit maybe on the corners here. One of my corners is not sitting right now. So yeah, this is another good reason why you shouldn't probably tighten the other end completely until we get it all together. But yeah, then we got same four bolts on each corner. So yeah, the main thing here to make sure you get right is that the, I guess, part with the tray here goes to the front, just like the logo on the other side down there. So yeah, now we just need to put all the bolts in, four on each corner, 12 total. And by the way, the printer does have nice squishy feet here that it sits on. All right, so if you haven't tightened all your bolts yet, like I haven't, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and tighten every one of them because this is going to, you know, bring everything together and make a solid frame. But actually guys, as I'm tightening this, I'm thinking that maybe it's a better idea to go ahead and flip it around on its feet and then tighten everything because it's not sitting completely straight right now and it could be flexing somewhat to the wrong side. So I'm gonna wait for that. And we also need to, before we flip it around, go ahead and install this little magnetic holder. And there's like a little T-nut. It's pretty simple the way it works. You just unscrew the T-nut. And we're gonna be going on this side and we're simply just gonna slide it down this rail here. And then it should just slide right now, which is basically going to the top. And it's gonna go somewhere here, I'm guessing. And we can figure out exactly how high we want it later. But yeah, you're just gonna tighten it and it's gonna lock it in. It doesn't move anywhere. And then our remote here, or our controller 
magnetize this to the holder just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this thing around. Wow, this thing is quite tall. All right, so we put in our bracket that holds the screen. The next part looks like we're gonna be putting in the arms with the hot end. So basically our hot end with the brackets that hold it all together. So if you guys look here on each of the axes or the corners, there's a similar bracket here. We just gotta figure out which is the front. I'm guessing where the logo is the front. So yeah, it probably goes like this. So the logo pointing to the front, that's how it's gonna go. You guys, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but yeah, we're just gonna literally stretch it on there. Just like that. So it all kind of want to twist together because it's all compressed until we put all three of them on. But let's grab another one here. And it might be easier to go ahead and, and put them on the hot end part first. I'm sure we can make it work here. Then we'll stretch it on this one. All right, so it's starting to hold itself. Same thing on our last one. Stretch it over onto the bracket. And there we go, guys. They're all on. So the springs keep them together. And that's like actually quite a cool, unique way of doing it and you guys can see how the delta works each arm controls a movement but what's interesting about that is there's quite a bit of calculating to do because each motor has to move a certain amount to you know move on a flat plane so delta printers are very unique but they got a really huge advantage of being able to move fast and everything is very lightweight here on the hot end itself but yeah that wasn't very hard and that part is good so for the next part what we need to do is we need to connect all these connections from the hot end to the other end here so we got a wire coming down here straight from the top and you guys can see that there's a bunch of wires that match up with the wires that are coming out of the hot end so it's a pretty simple process just match up the colors and connect them together now there are two wires that have black plugs and it look like they're identical but let's see maybe it doesn't matter where they go but let's just plug them in and see what happens and they're not labeled so hopefully that's how they go but the rest match up and plug in no problem and then we have also another plug that's left out and that's for the level so that's our temporary plug there when we level the bed also guys on the back part we have this other main plug that comes out and it simply just goes straight up from there to a socket right under here. So They're pretty self-explanatory. Maybe push the wire into the channel there to clean it up. That seems to work pretty good. All right, well, we're making good progress. Let's go ahead and flip the printer this way. And this is where we just plugged in this plug. This is one of our sides. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be installing the extruder assembly with the bracket and everything. And it, okay, so there's two slots that it actually has some hooks that it bites into or goes into like this. And then it kind of hangs off of there and then there's two bolts that we're gonna put in there. So we're using the smaller bolts that were included. We go ahead and snug them up. All right, that was pretty simple. Now we do have two wires coming out from the top and one of them's to the motor and the other one's to the filament detector. You guys probably can't see it. Yeah, there's a little pass through here. We can go to the motor, plug that in. So the motor is the larger one and the filament detector is the smaller one and that's going to plug into it and just like that so you guys probably can't see that but now it looks like i did make a mistake because this tube here coming from the top let's see if i can try this thing hopefully you guys can see that little tube i think it's supposed to go right into the filament detector but i didn't put it in there when i was putting on the bracket so yeah i'll probably have to loosen that again and see if we can pop it in there there we go so it has to go in inside the filament detector the little ptfe tubing and now we can tighten it back up. There we go. And so the way our filament feeds is from the top here down through the PTFE tubing into the detector. And then it goes into the extruder from there and then out of the extruder into the hot end. And while we're over here, we can go ahead and connect the PTFE tubing from the hot end into the extruder. I'm going to go ahead and lower this down a bit. So yeah, we're just going to simply insert it into the coupler there on the bottom. And just like that. And that should be good right there. Now, before we continue to the next step, we need to put a little wedge in here in the coupler so it doesn't open and close easily because it moves around. And so what we're looking for is probably in here. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. So we get a little cleaning cloth, an extra PTFE tubing, I guess this longer one, some zip ties and then clean out needle, an extra heating element, that's nice, and also a heat block temperature sensor, a tube of grease for greasing the printer, a micro SD card with an, a USB adapter included together with it. And also we get a brush. I'm not sure what this is for, maybe cleaning out something, models or dust. But what we're looking for are these little clips here. So they give you quite a few extra ones. They 
appear to be all pretty much the same. They are 3D printed, which is kind of cool. So yeah, we're just gonna grab one and insert it here into the coupler. A little bit tight fit, but it does go. And yeah, now it's super solid, nothing moves. But yeah, you definitely wanna install this little clip in here. And by the way, our high end already has the clip, so we're good there, so yeah. One thing I do wanna do while I'm over here is zip tie these two together here, the PTFE tubing and the wiring. I feel like that'll clean it up a little nicer. We're just gonna use these provided zip ties to secure it all. Last thing we want is a bunch of messy wires everywhere. And plus it'll kind of keep it away from the arms as it goes up. All right, I think that's pretty good there. Go ahead and cut the extra off. And that's much nicer. All right guys, so for the last part, we're gonna be putting our spool holder together. So it's pretty simple. We just need to connect these two parts together first. So there's two bolts that are gonna go through there. And there we have the spool holder. So the spool holder is gonna go on top of the printer like this. So we're still looking at the back here. Well, I guess one of the sides, but this is the inlet here for the filament that goes down into the extruder here. So basically there's two little threads here on top and that's where we're gonna connect the spool holder. Again, we're using small bolts. And that's it, our spool holder is on. So it's not super stable up here, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And if we flip the printer back to the front, you guys can see that the spool holder actually points straight to it. So yeah, this thing is very tall. I can't even fit it all in the camera here. Let's go to the bottom. And I think we're pretty much finished with the assembly, or at least the general assembly here. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the details of the printer. So yeah, you can tell guys how tall it is. It's very tall sitting here on the desk. And so a printer like this will definitely need its own space. So let's start here on the top. We can see we've got the spool holder. This is where our filament will feed in from the spool. The whole body is a metal construction. We've got the logo on the front. This is where our remote comes out or the controller. And it is fixed. And it's got this nice stretchy cord and it's magnetized. This bracket, and by the way, this thing does move around. I'll show you guys here. If you just kind of push it around it, I guess it's kind of like on a ball. Yeah, you can face it anywhere you want. I do like how the controller here, you can just pick up and use it, you know, without having to look down or to the side or whatever. So that's kind of nice. And it does fit in your hand pretty well. So let's look at the bottom of the top. So there's quite a bit of venting there. We got the filament detector here with the extruder motor and assembly. Main wire coming down. And then another wire here going to the hot end. Also with the PTFE tubing. This wire here, actually, I just tucked into the channel. And it goes in the bottom base for the heated bed and the power supplies down there. So we got linear rails on the three axes with these really heavy duty belts. And everything seems to be very well constructed. So this is actually some kind of composite here. But the channel and obviously the rails are all metal. And if we go down, we can see that we have adjusters here on the bottom. So there's like a bracket where the belt loops on. There's an idler pulley here. There's a bolt here with the knob that we can adjust the tension on the belts. And then we got this really interesting design on the arms with the spring that tensions them together. And it all comes down here to the hot end, which is a very cool design. Seems like quite clever with these springs here. So we already looked at the hot end, but yeah, it's a very nice, clean looking hot end with the dual parts cooling fans. So on mine, they seem to be pre-adjusted pretty good. They all seem to be the same tightness. And before you do adjust it, I think you have to loosen these bolts so the idler pulley can go up and down and then you re-tighten them, so. So looking down, we got the build plate itself and it's round, obviously, because this is a Delta printer. So the build plate is removable if you need to take it off. It secures with these three clamps. Let's go ahead and peel off the protector. And you guys can see we have the ultra base style dimples on the bed, which basically it's a coating that whenever it heats up, the filament really grabs to it. And when it cools off, it pops right off. So this makes it really convenient for printing. The only dangers of this is that whenever it cools off, let's say you lose power, there's a potential of the model popping off before you can resume it. But other than that, these coatings are really good. So right in the front of the printer, we got this nice little cubby box where you can put your spare parts and tools and things like that. I really like how they incorporated that. So going to the right side of the printer, we got our voltage selection here and we're still on 230, so we need to change it to 115. So I'm just gonna grab an Allen wrench and push it to 115. So make sure you check that before you power it on. And to the left side of the printer, we just have some venting here and our power socket with the on and off switch here. And looking from the front, going to the right side, it's clean here, we just have the extruder assembly. And from the front to the left side, we got some venting holes and also our USB connection to the computer. There's also a normal USB port there and also a micro SD card slot. 
So yeah guys, overall this is a pretty unique looking printer. It is a Delta printer and I definitely love the size of it. Other than the fact that Delta printers you know, are naturally tall, this is a really nice looking machine. And what's even more cool is the way it operates. So for the next part, let's go ahead and power it on, level the bed, and we'll start our first print. Well, check out that really cool animation right there. Wow, very cool. All right, so it looks like it's booted up. And I can hear some fans running on the bottom portion. And it sounds like it's the power supply. So yeah, overall on standby mode, not very loud at all. So let's go ahead and grab the remote. And maybe you guys can see the layout here. So very nice font. It's kind of like this teal green or not sure how you would call it, but it looks nice. So it looks like we have the hot end temperature there, the bed temperature, the FL Sun logo. Then we have four main buttons here. We've got print, tools, set, and info. So the print is gonna read the SD card. It's empty. And when I click it, there's a sound. So let's go to tools. So this is gonna be where all of our functions are for the printer. So we got heat, extrude, move, change, out of level, and language. And by the way, these are all the languages that they have. So we'll come back to this. So let's click on set. So here we have motor off, fan, and restore. And then we got info here, and this is everything about the printer. And this is our printing size. So it's 260 by 330. So 260 is round and 330 tall in millimeters. This is definitely a pretty nice large size for a Delta printer. All right, so I think first things first, if we go to tools here, what we want to do is check, make sure everything works first. So let's go to move. And here we can see we can move individual axes, or we can just go straight home. And I'm going to go ahead and push the home button. And there it goes, and it's very quiet. Okay, so the home is on the very top there. So let's go ahead and preheat now. And we can see we got hot buttons for PLA and ABS. That's very nice. I like how they included that. Or you can, you know, manually type it in. You can also cool down the nozzle and cool the bed separately. Very nice layout. I'm just going to hit on PLA and it's going to automatically set the parameters there to 220 and 60. So let's go back. So the cool part is, is that we always have the main status, which is the nozzle and the bed here on the screen. So what we want to do next is go to out of bed leveling. So let's go there. And here we have three options out of bed level, move the zero. I guess this is like reset the zero position. And then we got adjust the Z height. So I guess we'll start with the auto leveling. And to do that, we need to grab our auto leveling module here. And this is very simple the way it works. It just clicks on. It's magnetic right here. And then the other end is gonna plug into the plug that says level. So as simple as that, we should be ready to level. So in our control, let's hit the out of bed leveling. And it tells us to plug in that module before we start. So we're gonna say, yes, we did that. And it should start here. Let me zoom out for you guys. It says leveling, please wait. And there it goes. Going down pretty quick. Okay, and it looks like it's just gonna probe the bed. And all the corners, looks like it's doing first. All right, so it looks like that's all it needs to do. It's going back up. Well, maybe not, it's going back down now. But it's very interesting how the Delta printer moves. <laughs> all right, so now it's doing the more finer measurements on the bed. All right, and that looks like all the fine points. It's going back up. And that looks like everything for the outer leveling. All right, well, let's go ahead and take off the sensor. So it's simple as just unplugging it and let's go ahead and click this adjust Z so when I do that the head doesn't come down so I think we have to maybe go back and click this one called move to zero so let's try that so it says please remove a leveling switch before continuing so I think this is going to bring the nozzle down to the bed so let's go ahead and push yes and there it goes okay sure enough it's right down in there so I'm gonna grab some kind of paper I'm just gonna grab this thing that was included and I'm gonna put it between the nozzle and the bed and sure enough we are not even close there's a 
pretty decent gap. Actually, let me bring you guys down so you can see a little better. You hopefully can see now, but yeah, our bed is actually preheated right now. It's pretty hot and our nozzle is preheated. So everything is expanded as it should be. I don't know if I can get the controller low enough. So yeah, what we're gonna do is click adjust the Z now and now we're gonna go up and down. And then once we get it just right, we're gonna click the save button. So we got more incremental and then more coarse movements. So I'm gonna go with a course of 0 0.05 going down. So we're gonna keep pushing it down as we measure it here, gauge it with our paper. Okay, so too tight now, go back up. Okay, now I'm gonna use the more finer 0.1. Well, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Actually, this was the more coarse and this is the fine. So I guess I was on the more fine setting. Okay, so that's too tight. Going one up is, well, it looks like about right actually. So mine ends up being at minus 0.35 Z height. So now I'm gonna click the save button. And that's gonna save it and it's actually bringing it back up. So yeah, now we should be leveled since we did the out of bed leveling and our nozzle should be at the correct offset height. All right, so for the next part, we are ready to put our filament in. So I'm gonna use this red filament I got. It's a full spool, about 80% still in there. So it's literally just gonna sit right in there like that. And you guys can see that's pretty good right there. I mean, it does wobble a bit here and there, but it's not bad. And it seems to spin very easy. Well, that's a plus so yeah make sure you cut your filament on an angle mine's already cut but yeah we're gonna feed it right here and through this hole and that's gonna go down through that little ptf tubing into the filament detector and then out of the filament detector so you guys can see that we're gonna put it into the extruder so we're just literally just gonna feed it into the extruder and hopefully you guys can see this but there's an arm here that we got to stretch release the gear and then we can push it through farther and we can push it manually all the way through or we can use the screen here and we'll go to extruder or extrude and then here we can see in and out and the amount so we're going to go 10 millimeters and we obviously want to go in so it's going to push it in and you guys can see it spinning up and as it goes in eventually it should start coming out the nozzle since everything is preheated and there it goes so yeah simple as that we're good and it is purged and we're ready to start our first print so let's go ahead and grab our micro SD card. Now there is a note here saying that there's some important information, something about formatting it or whatnot else, which kind of is a little weird and confusing to be honest. So the card is unmarked and not sure what the size of it is, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see if there's anything on it. And hopefully we're not gonna mess anything up. But yeah, if you guys remember, it plugs here on the left side on the top and it does go right side up by the way. And we're gonna click on print and look at that. Sure enough, there's some folders in there and we do have a test G code there also. So let's click on that and then we'll click print. And sure enough, there it goes, it's starting and it looks like our nozzle's moving. And it started and seems to be sticking to the plate and the distance between the nozzle and the plate seems to be fine. It might be a tad bit high, so on the controller here, we can see that we can actually adjust that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And we can go down just a little bit. So I'm gonna click one time. And that appears to be much better. So I'm gonna change you guys the angle, but it does look like it's printing and everything's fine. So before we go down, let's go ahead and look at this menu here on the controller. So we got our nozzle temperature here, our bed temperature, the percentage done, the speed that it's printed at is 25 millimeters a second. Not very fast at all, actually. Our file name, which is test that G code and then we can pause it adjust the Z which we did and then we got more options here and also cancel which is stop printing so let's click on more options here we can adjust the temperature the fan and the speed so yeah very nice menu I love the font and how it's all laid out so I'm gonna bring you guys down a little lower so you can see a little better what's going on down there and as you guys can see our print is started and everything looks fine so it looks like it's some kind of two piece print. So we'll see what it actually is. It says that it's 2% done. So I'm not sure how big it is, but we'll see what it prints out. So the printer is very quiet overall, except for the extruder motor. Whenever it retracts, it makes a little bit of a sound. But other than that, it's actually very quiet. Let me bring in my microphone. So yeah guys, it's very quiet. If it wasn't for the retraction sounds, it would be 
extremely quiet. Now there is obviously some fan sound, but it's quieter than usual, what's interesting. So, so yeah, it looks like it sped up quite a bit faster on the controller here it actually says 160 180 sometimes so yeah it's boogieing along now and it's at nine percent moving fast so maybe i'm gonna bring this thing down a bit see how far i can go that might make more sense here i guess it's good whatever your eye level is but for you guys i want to bring it down so we can see it a little better very cool so far very nice guys i mean overall the experience has been very good from the start here to printing and as you saw it was not very hard to assemble actually quite simple so i'm gonna let this print print out and we'll see what comes out All right, so that didn't take long. It took 37 minutes, so it's okay that. So the bed is still warm, actually even hot, but well, let's see what it is. It says 42, okay, so let's see if it'll pop off anyway. Oh, look at that. Still comes right off. Very cool, so yeah, it looks like we got a bolt and a nut, and yeah, we didn't start too well here. I think it's because I didn't have the filament completely right or something, but in any case, the print quality itself looks pretty good. So I can tell that it's printed in coarse, probably 0.2 layer height, but still it turned out. Let's see if it fits together. And look at that. Perfect. Very cool. So yeah, looks like we're off to a good start. So I think to really know how well this thing prints is we're going to have to slice our own models, maybe a calibration cube and some benchies, and we'll see what those look like. So let's go ahead and hop over to the slicer and slice a few files. All right, so here we are at the computer and I got the micro SD card plugged in. Let's go ahead and see what we got in here. So we got a little readme text file, user manual, looks like in PDF forms, software and drivers. So here you can install Cura and they got some drivers and firmware for SD card. Anyways, troubleshooting, test models, and then some print parts, tube sleeve. So these are some of the parts that you can print out yourself, kind of like this clip here that holds the boating tube in from sliding around. So that's kind of nice to include this. So yeah, that's what's on the SD card. Let's go ahead and open up Cura since I already have it. We're gonna go ahead and add a new printer. So we're gonna click over here, add printer, and then you're gonna go here to non-network printers, click on that. And here you can see a bunch of printers and we're gonna find FL Sun, which is right here. And I guess this printer is new, it doesn't have it yet, but we have two choices here of the QQS and the QQ. So, so let's do the QQS and then we're gonna click add and then we're gonna get some machine settings here. Here we can see the parameters. So you wanna adjust this to 260 for the Y and the X because it's round and then 330 on the height. And we have an elliptical build plate, origin in the center with heated bed. So if you install the Cura that comes with it, it probably is gonna already have the profile. So this is if you don't have one and you just wanna use the Cura that you already have and just add this printer to it. Well, these are the parameters for it. But yeah, as simple as that. We basically have our QQS printer here and this is our volume. In any case, now you're just gonna throw in any kind of file. So let's go ahead and throw a Benchy in there. And you guys can see that's our build volume with the Benchy on it. So our parameters here are pretty standard. We got 0.2 layer height for faster printing. The wall line count I like to put to three because it's much better and you don't see the infill through the walls. Then we got top layers of five, bottom four. Infill density could be anything you want. I got it on 15. Temperatures 210. You can do anything from 190 to about 210, 215. For the heated bed, I like to keep it at 60. It seems to stick better. For print speed, 50 works great, but for this printer, I think 60 would be a good starting point. For the initial speed layer, you might want to keep it pretty low because you know you want your layer to go down nicely in the beginning so it could stick well. Retraction at 6.5, standard. Then everything else here is pretty much how it comes. And then for the build plate adhesion, I just use a skirt. You can do whatever you want with about three lines around it. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. And then we have spiralized mode here in special modes. And if we click that, you're gonna print in spiralized modes. Yeah, so to slice it, you're just gonna push slice and it's gonna show us that it's gonna only take one hour and six minutes, which is pretty incredible for a benchy. And the reason for that is because it's at 60 millimeters a second. So let's see if we change that to 80, how long will it take out of curiosity? And look at that, 55 minutes, so yeah. And 60 to 80 should be, you know, 100, should be about the sweet spot for this 
kind of printer. So yeah, then we're just gonna save to removable and that's it, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice a few benchies, maybe a slower one, faster, and then very fast. And then also we'll print out a calibration cube. So this is a speed comparison between the three benchies. So what you're looking at is 60 millimeters a second. And this is what 120 millimeters a second looks like. Uh, pretty quick. So the whole hot end is moving in real time. And you guys can see how quick it's moving. So it is slowing down on the outside layer, but on the inside it's full 120. All right, and so this is 180 millimeters a second. So this is pretty fast and you guys can see it's, you know, pretty ridiculous, this kind of speed. I'm pretty curious how the bench is gonna come out. But yeah, it seems to be still composed and nothing too crazy going on, but yeah, it's moving extremely quick. And the readout is not really accurate for some reason, but this is what we got here. So it's about 180 to 200. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. It's kind of all over the place, but yeah, it's definitely going quick. So, And it's impressive how quiet the printer is even at these speeds. It's pretty amazing. I'm gonna bring my mic in. So yeah, very impressive. It's only been seven minutes and we're 13% done. All right, and so here we have our three benchies with the three different speeds. So we got a 60, 120, and then a 180. And you can probably see just from the side profile here, the major differences is in vibration. But before we take a closer look, let's go ahead and check out this calibration cube. Now the thing that's quite impressive is how the layers went down. So even though we have X, Y, and Z, normally we look at you know the axes. Because this is a delta printer, you know they all work together, so it doesn't really matter. But we can see here's what the X looks like, the Y, then the wall of the X, and the wall of the Y. So they're very similar, or pretty much identical, and the Z. So yeah, as you guys can see, the way the printer puts the layers down is very nice. And this was printed at 60 millimeters a second, which normally I test everything at 50, but because this is a Delta printer, I wanted to speed it up a bit. So looking at these benches, we can see that 60 millimeters a second looks very nice. So it's very clean. The layers go down beautifully. There is a little bit of something right here, but nothing too serious. You guys can see on the reflections how well those layers are sitting. Bottom is nice. And by the way, it's been sticking very well and popping off when it cools off. But yeah, overall a great, great print. Actually much better than some i3 printers for sure. So now we do have a little slot in here. So yeah, everything looks really nice. The chimney's round, very good print overall, 60 millimeters a second. So let's look at the 120, which is double of the 60. And we can see it still looks very good, but we're starting to notice some ringing or vibrations, especially around corners and this round part here. And on this doorway here, you guys can probably see it's quite a bit of ghosting there. So considering, you know, 120 millimeters a second, this benchy still looks very good and very presentable for sure. So yeah, it looks like the sweet spot to this printer would probably be around 80 just like initially thought, maybe up to 100. But here we have a Benchy that's 180 millimeters a second, which is very quick. And we can really start to see more serious ringing. Not terrible still, but a little more serious. And here we have a little bit of inconsistency, but still overall as a print, it's still quite solid and not bad at all for this kind of speed. 
and we can see the vibrations there a little more so overall very impressive for these speeds especially i would say for this printer anywhere from 80 to 100 millimeters seems to do perfect and if you want faster you can go 120 maybe 40 and still get very nice reasonable quality so all these are printing at 0.2 layer height and we'll continue to print with that and i'm going to bump up the speed to 80 on the rest of the prints we'll print i'm going to print some more out and we'll take a closer look at those All right, guys, so this is happening live, trying to capture it here. But yeah, the printer looks like it cannot go up anymore. And so now it's just rubbing on top there. So we're 97% done at 318. So yeah, it can definitely not go to 330, or at least on this print here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it before something goes bad. Yes. So yeah. Maybe you guys can see there it was having a little bit of a scrape moment, I guess, because it can't go up anymore and it just keeps printing over and over again on the top. So, and if you guys saw that, it was at 318. So, yeah, I don't understand why it's only at 318. But actually, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, that does seem right because the way these arms operate, in order for it to get from one corner to the other, when as higher it gets, it gets kind of like goes to a point. So if I printed like to say the spaceship, I could probably get very close to 330. But with a vase like this, because it has a wider print on the top, it needs a lot more movement on each corner of the legs. So yeah, that's one thing to consider here about the Delta printer, that it does have a limitation as you go up. All right guys, so here are all the prints that we printed and yeah, I'm really impressed with this printer. It did a very good job at 80 millimeters a second and really putting those layers down quickly. So we've seen the benchies, we've seen the bolt and the calibration cube. Let's go ahead and look at these other prints that I printed. I like this little tree frog and I like to print this because this is quite a fine petite print that actually doesn't always turn out great. But on this printer, you guys can see it looks really good. So all the details are there. We got 0.2 layer height. You can see the layer somewhat, but you know, for this kind of layer height with the slopes, you are supposed to, you know, somewhat see them. No stringing here between the eyes, which is not always the case. So very good on retraction on the six and a half millimeters. You guys can see I got a little bit of gold here because I didn't purge it very well when I first started from the other print. But overall, the little froggy here turned out really good. And this didn't take very long to print at 80 millimeters a second, like about 35 minutes or so. So here we have a Rook, and this Rook usually turns out kind of rough on normal i3 printers. And I'm not sure why exactly, but it has something to do with the model and the scale, I think. But here on the Delta printer, it looks much better than usual, which is quite interesting. The surfaces are much more smoother, and we have this kind of bronze silky filament, which really shows off the Rook here. So yeah, and again, excellent print with all the details, including the little ladder inside with the helix kind of hard to see but and also we can see the overhang in there not droopy at all so yeah an excellent print very surprising kind of for this printer at 80 millimeters a second again didn't take long to print this large print here and by the way the bed has been working excellently it's been sticking and then popping off once it cools off really easily so the next print we got here is a squirtle is what it's called. So it's like a coral and a turtle combined. And if you guys can see, the layers went down really nicely on this also. And again, at 80 millimeters a second, it's pretty nice quality for the print. And for some reason, this printer just makes all the prints look better than I normally see them, especially on the more flatter surfaces or rounded surfaces even. It just seems to look better. Very nice. And again, this had very little surface area to stick to. The bed stuck very well and didn't pop right off. So yeah, as you guys can see, this thing is quite good and quite impressive for what it is as a Delta printer. Now this print here is a bearing. It's supposed to be functional, but for some reason on this printer here, it did not work out. So I don't know if it's just the tolerances weren't good or something happened. We did have a little bit of lift off here on the back, but nothing too serious. But yeah, I couldn't get it to churn even putting a wrench in there. So yeah, that did fuse together. So that's kind of a downer a bit, but it is a Delta printer. So not expecting perfection out of it when it comes to precision, but 
you know, I guess that's maybe the only real downfall here is that it seems to be not as accurate as an i3 would be. But you are getting speed and, you know, the, just the uniqueness of this style printer. And so for the last print here, we got a whole vase and it's still stuck onto the bed. I haven't pulled it off. So this is in spiralized mode. So it's one layer all around. It does have a few layers on the bottom. I think four to be exact. And then one layer all the way around. And at the top here, we actually had a little mishap as you guys saw there. So let's go ahead and try to pop it off and see how easy it comes off so I'm just gonna push it see what happens okay there it goes it just pops right off so yeah again this build platform on this printer is very good so you can see how smooth that bottom is very nice and it popped just right off so this vase looks really really good I mean I've printed a lot of stuff but man this vase is just awesome looking and again there's something about this printer it just puts the layers down really smooth and you guys can see that in the reflections here how well everything is sitting so yeah i'm very impressed with this vase that you guys saw there that we couldn't print all the way the 330 and and i totally forgot because i haven't did a delta printer in a while that as you know the z-axis goes up your printing plane i guess is what i'm trying to say circumference of the print as it goes up gets smaller and smaller so it kind of tapers into a cone so as you print you can go really wide at 260 and then as you go up you have to taper if you don't taper you might not have enough room for the legs to move to do the wide on the top here so so that's one thing to you know really consider about a delta printer is that you are limited there as you go up yeah so as you guys can probably see i'm pretty impressed with this printer overall i just like how it all works very well and easy to put together and start printing so uh, this is probably going to be a very good printer for somebody that wants to get into delta style printer and maybe you're a newcomer that you know is kind of intimidated by the assembly this one is really easy to put together so i think the super racer here has a lot to offer with the overall package we got a very reasonable 260 by 330 somewhat printing volume the quiet stepper drivers make it a very pleasant experience to run it the the ultra base style perforated bed sticks very well when it's hot and pops right off when it cools. I love this portable touchscreen display and the UI on it is very nice. The build quality on the whole printer is excellent and I love the materials and everything is heavy duty including the belts and the motors. Also we do get modern features like automatic bed leveling the sensor that we used and filament detection so if you run out on a print it'll detect it and you can continue printing. Also we have power loss resume so if you lose power you can start from there. The only issue is that maybe because of this bed type there's a chance that you know it could pop off when it cools but on this one here it seems to stick very well until you force it off so yeah that shouldn't be an issue there and the most important parts which is the hot end is assembled very well with dual cooling fans and also we get a dual drive extruder so yeah very reliable and consistent with the actual feed flow and printing so yeah the overall construction of this printer is excellent the only issue i found a little bit with this printer is that when feeding the filament in it's a little bit hard to get it through the extruder and the tube but that could be just my instance here so yeah overall this printer is an awesome printer and i would definitely recommend this if you want to get into delta printing there's not very many machines that offer this much innovation and value for what you get and the way it's made and put together it should be a very long lasting and enjoyable experience so yeah guys if you want to pick up a super racer for yourself i'll have some links in the description check it out and if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this stay tuned i got more 3d printing stuff coming up and also check out the 3d printing playlist which has over 100 videos on different 3d printers that i've reviewed so you might find something interesting there and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace